Right, so we will continue our lecture on the middle layer. Now we will be discussing about the uh, features in other walls. We have already discussed the features, important things related with the lateral wall. Now let's go to the medial wall. Uh, I will draw the middle layer like a cube. Right, let's suppose this is the medial wall. Right, this is the medial wall. Here is the, yes, posterior wall. Here is floor of the middle ear. Right, medial wall, posterior wall, floor. I have removed the lateral wall and I have removed the partially anterior wall. So I will make the interior wall only partially so that yeah this is the interior wall I have made only removed it partially and here I have removed the membranous wall also let's suppose So I hope now you understand this structure. Here again I will repeat it, this is anterior wall. This is lateral wall. Here it is posterior wall, medial wall and roof at the top, okay, little bit roof. Right? Now I will pick the medial wall from here and draw it here. And we'll see the important relationships or structures in the middle wall. Let's go over there. This is the medial wall. Now, what are the important structures or features in it? The most prominent feature when you look at the medial wall, let's suppose I'm standing in the middle here and there's an interior wall lateral wall, here is the medial wall and posterior wall. Now on the medial wall, let's suppose my board is the medial wall, actually there is a major prominence in the center of this, right, there is a very big prominence here, there is a bulge, there is a bulge in the medial wall and this bulge is inward, right, so we can draw it here, there is a bulge here and wall is coming inward it is like if this is the medial wall there's a bulge like that and bulge like that so there's a circular bulge I don't know what kind of shape is this but there's a shape like that projecting here right now this bulge which is inward this is called promontory what is it called promontory promontory now why this promontory is there right why this bulge is there there must be a reason for that right let me draw the another way middle here you remember there was actually this is the promontory which is bulging inward is that right question is that why it is bulging inward in the medial wall actually just more medial to this there is cochlea part of the inner ear and this cochlea it has turned now this is cochlear this is called the basal turn or the first turn of the this turn of the cochlea right with the vestibule that produces a bulge in the middle ear medial wall right so promontory is a bulge in the medial wall in which medial wall is little bit pushed inward actually why because if you drill and drrr, drill inside it you will end up into basal turn of the what is this cochlea is that right so that is an anatomical landmark for the presence of cochlea then promontory if you look a little backward okay, I will make it here posterior wall also from here I put the posterior wall here so that we'll keep on correlating these two walls with each other. The posterior wall and of course here is floor. 
Now this is floor. Now, this is bulge. Now, posterior superior to that, there is a round uh, oval window here. What is it? Oval. oval window here. And posterior inferior to that, there is a round. round window here. And previously, I mentioned in the lecture that the foot plate of step is opens into oval window. window. Here is vestibular structure, you know, here is cochlea, then vestibule, then there are semicircular no. canals, right? And stapes opens here, this is the oval window, and you remember I mentioned previously there was a round, round window, and in between them, what was this bulge? Promontory. And what was fixating here? Yes, stapes, stapes. stapes. foot plate of stapes was fitting into this and don't forget your friends here what is this Melius and Incus now this is the foot plate of stapes right it fits into oval window the exact location of oval window is that it is present in the medial wall posterior superior to the promontory and the round window is down here you remember it was having another membrane which is called secondary tympanic membrane what is this this is secondary tympanic membrane here and what is over here yes foot plate of stapes foot plate of stapes is present over here right now this oval window is also called this one more because it opens into scala vestibuli so we also call it yes vestibular window okay or scala and this one this is also called round window and other name for the round window is yes what is the other name for the round window No, the secondary tympanic membrane is present over here. Fenestra rotunda. Yes, fenestra rotunda. And this can be then called likewise fenestra ovalis. Right? But important thing is remain simple oval window, round window. An oval window foot plate of stapes fixates, uh, rather fits into. And here the secondary tympanic membrane. Now, here I want to tell something about the movement of the stapes. Actually, step, if I make the medial wall like this, and here is the, okay, here is the foot plate of stapes. Let's suppose this is the foot plate of stapes. Actually, there is a ligament here which holds the foot plate of stapes with the window. This ligament is called annular ligament. What is it called? Because it is like a ring around it. I will make it like this. This is the annular ligament. ligament which holds the foot plate of stapes with the oval window. Now, most of the people believe that stapes moves like a piston in and out of the window. That is not true. Stapes does not move like a piston. It moves in slightly different way. Let me tell you that let's suppose this is the oval window and my hand is the foot plate of stapes. My hand is foot plate of stapes. Now actually stapes does not move like this. It does not move like this. Actually its posterior part of the ligament, which ligament? Annular ligament. It is shorter and thickened. So stapes is more fixed, more tightly fitting into posterior wall than interior. So actually it vibrates like this. The movement in the posterior part of the foot plate of stapes is less and movement in the anterior part is more so actually stapes does not move, does not move like a piston it moves like a door hinge hinge on the posterior side of the window and moving to and fro is that right this is one thing which is important so again these are three landmark another thing which is very important on the promontory there is a network of nerves 
right and that network of nerves is called tympanic plexus which we will discuss in detail later so on promontory sometimes there are slightly grooved struck grooved appearance due to these tympanic plexus neuronal network right what is the input to this network and what is the output of this network we'll talk later now now we come to the very important one more structure in the medial wall that in the medial wall within the medial wall within the medial wall uh, there is a longitudinal and then it is going to the posterior wall yeah there is a longitudinal ridge or bulge or prominence which is horizontally going backward and then it turns downward within the posterior wall actually within this this bulge which is available here let's suppose if this is the medial wall if this is the medial wall this board you will find the prominence like this right and this prominence goes backward and then it goes downward now you can imagine this is like a pipe this is like a pipe which is present within the there is a pipe which is present within the medial wall okay let me make it more clear if i draw the medial wall more double so there is a oh there is a pipe here do you understand actually within this pipe there is a nerve called facial nerve what is this here facial nerve which is moving within this part of the wall so facial nerve is not exposed to the middle ear cavity facial nerve is not exposed to the middle ear cavity facial nerve is passing through a bony canal in the petrous part of temporal bone it is passing through a bony canal through a petrous part of temporal bone and this canal which is called facial canal it is present in upper part of medial wall of middle ear moving horizontally backward and eventually approaching to the posterior wall and there within the posterior within the posterior wall this facial canal which is bony canal moves downward am i clear now facial nerve is present within it but the question is that from where the facial nerve come here and where the facial nerve goes from here this is very important right so let me make it clear to you so if this is the medial wall okay if i make the medial wall a little bit thickened so what will happen i can show that there is the facial canal here you understand and facial nerve is passing through this this is the cut section of facial nerve okay now from how the facial nerve reaches here and where eventually it is it, it intends to go now i will draw one diagram from the top now here is let's suppose middle ear and here is its medial wall and here is posterior you are looking from this angle to the right ear so this is posterior of course i put the nose here and few here which are left and shaped so this is the middle ear you are looking at the roof this is the roof this is the posterior wall this is the medial, medial wall right uh, here is your cochlea here is vestibule and here is semicircular canal and here is your internal acoustic meatus right facial nerve along with the eighth cranial nerve facial nerve enters from here it has two part facial nerve proper and there is nervous intermedius so facial nerve passes through internal acoustic meatus right it uh, emerges from pont you know at under the pont between the pont and medulla junction facial nerve a little laterally it emerges outward and then it moves forward and it moves within internal acoustic meatus and it passes approaches the internal ear now internal acoustic meatus is also bone within the petrous part of temporal bone it's a canal within the petrous part of temporal bone facial nerve along with vestibulocochlear nerve 
Now vestibular cochlear now cochlear part will terminate here and vestibular part will terminate in the vestibular area concerned with the balance but facial nerve keep on moving forward until it is at the top of the vestibule let me make it this is the vestibule and semicircular canal now I will draw this here larger this is the vestibule and these are the semicircular canals and here is your what is this middle ear I'm drawing this structure larger right and this is the middle ear okay this is middle ear which wall media wall and here it is roof on uh, this is posterior wall of the middle ear you understand it this is the roof of the middle ear of course floor of the middle cranial fossa floor of the middle cranial fossa roof of the middle ear now where the facial nerve is reaching internally caustic meatus was like that this facial nerve from here so facial nerve is uh, reaching here and it crosses above the what is this vestibule right and it reaches yes here there's a ganglion it's a very seductive pathway very secret pathway of tunnels so facial nerve will reach in the internally caustic meatus along with eighth nerve vestibular cochlear part which I'm not drawing and facial nerve pass above the vestibule of the in or internal ear and then it reaches to middle ear but which exactly which part of the middle ear it reaches on to the medial wall it reaches to medial wall and in the medial wall in the superior area and interior area it means that facial nerve in this diagram if we can magnify this it reaches exactly at this point at this point and if we come over here so we can draw like this facial nerve came from the internally caustic meatus here and it reached over here right so basically facial nerve was approaching like that and then within this it went over here but in this area it has a very big ganglion what is this it has a ganglion and this ganglion okay I'll draw this ganglion here this ganglion is geniculate ganglion from here the facial nerve take a turn backward so it is like a genu genu mean knee bend right there's one bend here and other bend is here right so facial nerve will approach here from where it came it came from the yes brain stem it entered into yes internally caustic meatus it has two part nervous intermedius and facial nerve proper and this facial nerve components move forward and medially reach to the above the internal ear they reach to middle ear where to the medial wall when they approach the medial wall where these fibers will find themselves they will be in the medial wall but anteriorly and superiorly let's imagine my board is the medial wall my board is the medial wall facial nerve came from that side right from there it came and it ended made a ganglion here from a ganglion here facial nerve started going backward right but it is not dangling or hanging in the middle ear cavity it is in a bony canal in the facial canal it will start moving backward and then downward and then it go to posterior wall and come downward right so this is geniculate ganglion this is facial canal over right and now we come to another thing one very important thing here facial nerve give a branch uh, which is called greater petrosal nerve what is this greater petrosal nerve we'll discuss its detail later so here is the facial nerve now let's enlarge this area focus on this area facial nerve has gone there here facial nerve will turn backward and then turn downward but here it gives a branch which is called greater petrosal nerve which will emerge from here in the floor of the middle cranial fossa it will move upward again I will repeat it facial nerve came from there here is geniculate ganglion from here facial nerve is going backward and downward but from this point it gives a branch which is called greater 
petrosal nerve which will jump into middle canal fossa and for a very brief uh, you can say distance it will travel within the middle canal fossa and then it will jump into foramen lacerum that we will discuss later part of the lecture right that eventually what is its destination so greater petrosal nerve is given there now how many features another thing in the medial wall we have talked about this promontory in the medial wall there is oval window there is round, round window there is facial canal which is in upper part horizontal prominence and then one more structure you know what is this uh, what is this thing lateral semicircular canal what is this okay I will just make it a little more prominent this is lateral semicircular canal now lateral semicircular canal also uh, pre, uh, you can say produces a prominence in the what is this area medial wall right of the middle layer so basically it makes a prominence like this right this prominence can be seen over here so this prominence is the prominence of what lateral semicircular canal. canal right now these are the important structures in the medial wall one more important structure is there is a hook here I don't know why no I know why it's for the tendon of tensor tympani right again we'll discuss it later this hook is called uh, processus cochlariformis processus processus cochleary formus right okay let me tell you what is the purpose of this you remember I told you that uh, if this is the medial wall here is the posterior wall and wh which wall should be this one yes interior wall very good what is this interior wall I told you there were two canal here there were one canal here another was justician tube this canal was for what there was a muscle inside it this muscle was called tensor tamponi even though I'll discuss this muscle later in detail its tendon come out from here right so actually what happens that if I remove this part its tendon will come out of this on the medial wall here is the medial wall this is the hook processes cochlearyformis so what really happened that this tendon will come here and from here it will move laterally and this will go laterally and stick with the handle of malleus so whenever this muscle contract it will pull the handle of malleus which is here towards medially and make the membrane tense that is why we call it tensor tympani so this process is cochlearyformis formus is for this tendon right so that it turn can a uh, tendon can pass through this and turn acutely laterally am I clear or just teaching myself Karna yes, you understand it Mr. Ram yeah. you are also understanding it good so there's processes cochlearyformis formus and it is receiving the tendon and then turning it laterally tendon of what tensor tamponi now these are the important features in the medial wall but what are the clinical correlates why a doctor should know them there are reasons number one let's start from the top if there is some pathology in the middle ear let's imagine a pathology cholesteatoma cholesteatoma now the cholesteatoma is a pathological pathological condition in which in the middle ear there is a sac of stratified squamous epithelium what happens in the middle ear uh, there is a sac of I'm going to make a middle ear here yes stratified squamous epithelial sac and this in this sac or bag of a stratified epithelium it keep on proliferating cells and this proliferating cells this mass keep on growing this mass of cholesteatoma cholesteatoma is a misnomer it does not have cholesterol and it is not a tumor it is just a bag of what epithelium. stratified squamous epithelium and this may be present in chronic otitis media right and this is a very dangerous situation it is so dangerous that it can kill the patient 
when you are going to deal with cholesteatoma, forget about the ear functions. Try to save the life. Because it progress, if you ignore it, it will progressively enlarge. And when it enlarges, it also secretes certain products. It secretes certain products. And these products which is secrete, they are very dangerous and destructive. Even they destroy the bony component of the middle ear or surrounding areas. These components which are released, some of them are simply collagenases. Collagenases will digest away the bones. Wherever cholesteatoma touches any structure, it digest away, melt away the structure. Secondly, cholesteatoma secretes some product which stimulates the osteoclast in the bone. And you know osteoclast are bone eating cells. So bones start destroying themselves. So it's a very dangerous, you can say, a sort of time bomb there. A very gradually, gradually multiplying, proliferating, uh, producing very dangerous toxic products, destructive products, and eating up the components of bone and the surrounding structures, components of the middle ear. And it may perforate the, what is this, tympanic membrane laterally. Cholesterol lateral wall, it can perforate the tympanic membrane. It love to perforate at what area? Parth flaccida, right? Posterior perforations with scanty discharge and very offensive smell, right? But anyway, what I really want to tell you this. Let's pose. Now I'm going to tell you the clinical correlate of what is this? Mid. If cholesterol is here, and if it approaches the medial wall, what can it do? Number one, it can damage. Oval window, damage the, what is this? Stapes, even it can damage the incurs, even it can destroy the milius. So what will happen? Do you think bone energy, bone, uh, do you think a sound energy will be transmitted or conducted well through middle ear? No. no. If ossicular chain is damaged, then sound energy from the tympanic membrane cannot be properly conducted to the inner ear. So conductive deafness can occur. Conductive deafness can occur, especially if stapes is damaged or any of the other ossicles. If it cholesteatoma damages the facial canal, then facial nerve palsy can occur. If cholesteatoma damages, you can say destroy this bone and damages lateral semicircular canal, that is organ concerned with the balance, kinetic balance, person will develop the vertigo, hallucination of movements. So there can be vertigo, when this area is irritated or disturbed, there can be facial nerve palsy, when facial canal is damaged, there can be conductive deafness if, what is this? Stapes or oval window is disturbed and there can be tinnitus. What is tinnitus? Ringing bells in the ear. The ringing bells, Christmas bells come in the ear or what? Or like bell for a marriage party or what? No, ringing sounds. These, nice sounds. Who will define tinnitus for me? Yes. Don't tell me these are auditory hallucinations. Auditory hallucinations are produced in temporal lobe. Actually, tinnitus is when from inner ear, there's inappropriate stimulation. Inappropriate stimulation to the inner ear structures and producing the yes, action potential in which pathway? Auditory pathway without any external sound stimulus when there's no external sound stimulus but still due to some pathology or some problems some chemical or toxin or any reason there can be so many reasons simple stress can also produce tinnitus right that will distress will disturb your blood flow and ischemia can occur anyway i will not go into that detail so actually what i'm trying to say because there's labyrinthine structure of the inner ear just medial to the middle med, uh, medial wall so if medial wall is damaged it can produce tinnitus it can produce vertigo balance problem tinnitus uh, pathological hearing problem and it can produce conductive deafness and facial nerve palsy can also be produced one more pathology i would love to mention here that is related with the foot plate of stapes and its intimate relation with the oval window there's a special pathology there. The, that pathological condition is called autosiclerosis. That is called autosiclerosis. Let me tell you what is autosiclerosis. Let's suppose here is the oval window. And here is your, what is this? 
फुट प्लेट ऑफ स्टेपीज एंड वॉट इज दिस विच लिगामेंट एनुलर लिगामेंट एंड हियर इज योर अदर कंपोनेट ऑफ स्टेप इज बोन नाउ समाइम्स वट हैपन दैट बिटवीन द ओवल विंडो एंड द स्टेप इज देयर शुड बी हाईली इलास्टिक एनुलर लिगामेंट सो वट एवर वाइब्रेशन कम दे शुड बी फेथफुली ट्रांसमिटेड टू द इनर इयर इन सम अनफॉर्चुनेट पीपल दिस स्टार्ट गोइंग under in in the appropriate and abnormal bone formation here abnormal bone formation or inappropriate abnormal bone formation occur uh, around the annular ligament and around the oval window and foot plate of stapes and progressively as it become more and more dense this will impair the movement of foot plate of stapes and that will again lead to what what kind of deafness conductive deafness because sound energy from its tympanic membrane cannot be conducted to the inner ear as foot plate of stapes is no more having a highly elastic annular ligament and this bony uh, formation here will impair the free movement of the what foot plate of stapes this condition is called autosclerosis this is called autosclerosis right so this is a few words about the medial wall now let's go to the posterior wall what are the important features in the posterior wall now just a little review of medial wall what is this structure yes please promontory what is this what is this what fits into oval window and what fits into round window secondary tympanic membrane and here is a yes facial nerve canal and then from here it will be going down from the posterior wall and it will keep on going down 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 and in the end it will open at stylomastoid foramen right so and what was here yes please lateral semicircular canal prominence so these were the important feature in the medial wall if you are too good you may remember processus cochleiformis here i want to tell you uh, processus uh, cochleiformis even though its function is just to provide a, a bony pulley for the tensor tympani tendon but it has a clinical importance you know what is the clinical importance a surgical land it's a surgical landmark surgeons are very careful don't go too near to this area because then you will hurt the vision of facial nerve and geniculate ganglion right it's very near to the geniculate ganglion right now we come posterior wall we are going to talk about this wall and this wall i have drawn out here and now here is the membranous wall and here was your okay which wall was this carotid wall or anterior wall of course medial wall is also called labyrinth thin wall posterior wall is called mastoid wall now important structures in the posterior wall number 1 in the posterior wall at postero superior corner this prominence of lateral semicircular canal is also there not only here plus here is a special window here very special window 